What is logic? What is it all about? Why do people study logic? Let's find out. Welcome to Attic Philosophy. On this channel, we're talking about all different aspects of philosophy and logic. In this series of videos, we're going to be focusing in on the basics of logic. I'm going to be taking you through from the start how to go about learning logic. In this video, we're going to be starting right at the beginning and asking, what is logic? Since we're going to be studying some logic, we kind of want to know what it is, what it's for. And basically, logic is about working out what counts as a good argument. For our purposes, a good argument is going to be a logically valid one. That is one which preserves truth from premises to conclusion. OK, so if the premises are true, then the conclusion is guaranteed to be true as well. Logic doesn't just tell us what a valid argument is. It also gives us the tools to work out whether an argument is good or bad. So we're going to be able to test whether an argument is valid. OK, let's look at some examples. So suppose we're interested in who's going to go to the party. OK, and we've got the information that Anna will go to the party and Beck will go to the party. We can conclude Anna will go. OK, so from Anna will go and Beck will go, we can conclude Anna will go. That's a super simple example. Here's another example. Who's going to go to the party? Anna will go or Kath will go, but Anna won't go, so Kath will go. So because either Anna or Kath will go, but Anna won't go, we've concluded Kath will go. Another example. Who's going to go to the party? Well, Kath will go if Anna goes. OK, so the important word here is if. And if we've also got the information that Anna goes, then we can conclude so Kath will go. OK, so interesting thing about this argument. Here we've said Kath will go if Anna goes. A different way of saying that would be to say if Anna goes, then Kath will go. OK, so rather than saying one thing if another, I can say if the second thing, then the first thing. OK, so if Anna goes, then Kath will go. So if we know if Anna goes, then Kath will go. And also Anna goes, we can conclude so Kath will go. OK, let's focus on this particular argument here for a moment because it's an important one. The features here are going to keep cropping up again. Look at this first sentence here, the first premise. It's an if then. When we've got an if then, there's two important parts to it. There's the first bit, the if bit. That is called the antecedent. And then we've got the second bit, the then bit. That's called the consequent. So here's the thing about this argument. We've got the antecedent here and the consequent here in the first premise. The second premise, Anna goes, that is exactly the same as the antecedent in the first premise. And the conclusion, so Kath will go, that's exactly the same as the consequent of that first premise. So this bit and this bit is exactly the same. This argument, the whole thing together, is called modus ponens. It's an important argument. We're going to keep coming back to it. OK, so here's an important feature of logic. It's topic neutral. What does that mean? It basically means it doesn't matter what an argument is about for evaluating whether it's a good or a bad argument. Whether or not the argument is good or bad just depends on how the argument is put together. It depends on the structure of the argument, its logical form, not the particular topic that the argument is about. OK, why is that important? Well, let's go back to this argument, OK? If Anna goes, then Kath will go. Anna goes, therefore, Kath will go. So suppose you have some, for whatever reason, you know, you, you're really resistant to the idea that Kath's going to go to the party. So you might psychologically be feeling that that is a bad argument. 
But it's not a bad argument. It's a good argument. It's a logically valid argument. It's one of the simplest logically valid arguments there are, okay? It's an instance of modus ponens. So we have to separate out the logical structure of the argument, which says it's a valid argument, from the, the conclusion, whether we like or dislike the conclusion, the idea that Kath's going to be at the party, okay? How do we separate out those two things? Well, we, we try to abstract any particular non-logical content, like the fact that this argument is about people going to a party. So the way we can do that is by replacing these sentences of English with kind of dummy sentences, okay? So we're just going to call them A and B and C, P and Q and R and so on. But we have to be clever about how we do this. We have to do this in a way that doesn't destroy the logical structure of the argument. If we just called these three sentences here, A, B and C, we would have no logical structure. So the key to doing this is what we were talking about a minute ago, the idea that the antecedent here is the same as the second premise and the consequent here is the same as our conclusion. What we can do is replace this sentence here with A. And since we've replaced that sentence, let's replace exactly the same sentence in our premise with A. And then let's replace this sentence here and also this one with B. And exactly the same down here. So what we've got there is an argument that goes, if A then B, A, so B. And that's still modus ponens. We're going to be looking at lots of arguments that look like this. Schematic arguments, just setting out the logical structure. OK, so we begin with a premise that is a conditional, an if then, and then we have the antecedent as our second premise and we conclude the consequent. If A then B, A therefore B. That's modus ponens. It's a really good example of a simple valid argument. OK, these are really simple arguments, but logic can also handle really complex arguments and, and difficult philosophical ideas. Let me just give you an example. OK, so here's a deep philosophical idea. The idea that truth has to be knowable in principle. OK, so if something's true, then it's possible for someone somewhere to know it. All truths are knowable. That, that's an important philosophical idea. But is it true or is it false? How do we how do we find out? Well, Logic actually helps us with that because we can infer from all truths are knowable to all truths are in fact known, which is obviously false. How can we infer like that? Well, the, the logical argument goes like this. Suppose that all truths are knowable and also suppose that there's this further truth, P, that is in fact unknown. So since that's a truth, we can possibly know it. So then it would be possible to know that this unknown truth is known. But that would be a truth that is both known and unknown, which is impossible, a contradiction. So we can, using an inference technique called reductio ad absurdum, go back on our original assumption and conclude that it was false. We originally assumed that all truths were knowable. We got a contradiction. So actually, it turns out that it's not the case that all truths are knowable. And we've derived that using really quite simple logic. Logic is really powerful. That's quite a complex argument and there's been lots of philosophical arguments over whether it works or not. In these videos, we're going to keep things pretty simple. Logic can be super powerful, but we're going to do things all by little steps, like the ones we looked at a minute ago, things like modus ponens. We're going to take these little steps, we're going to understand why they work, and we're going to put them together. So these little steps are going to make up big, complex, powerful arguments. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be bringing out lots more videos about basic logic. So if you want to get updates on them, hit the bell button. In the next video, we're going to be moving on to the simplest and most basic kind of logic, propositional logic. And we're going to be focusing in on the language of that logic, how we write out sentences in logic, how we understand the structure of those sentences. And then two videos along, we're going to be looking at how we understand what those sentences mean. Okay, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back next time.